Well, good morning. It's good to be in the house of the Lord, amen. And I pray that we come this morning with no sin unconfessed in our lives. And we're singing unto Him and we're praising Him with a clean heart, amen. And let's stand and let's begin to warm this place up with the presence of God. Sing it out, church. Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty. song shall rise to thee. Holy, 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 merciful and mighty, God in three persons, blessed Trinity. Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, Thy works shall praise thy name in earth and sky and sea. Holy, 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 merciful and mighty, God in three persons, blessed Trinity. What a joy it is to see each and every one of you here this morning, and we've just pray that God's going to bless us as we gather together to worship. If you're visiting with us today and you've never filled out a visitor's card, would you slip up your hand and hold it there for just a second and receive a card from these men, fill it out and drop it in the offering plate, and we'll be very grateful to you for doing so. Prayer time on Tuesday morning at 10, our regular Wednesday night services, and there's a class for every person on Wednesday night. The adults meet here in Fellowship Hall, and we have a great time worshiping together, and we encourage you to come and be a part of that service. All right. Let's bow our heads together now for prayer. Our Heavenly Father, we do thank you for this beautiful, beautiful day you've given to us, Lord. And it's a day you've made, you've made it for us that we might come together to worship today. And Lord, I pray that we're here for no other reason but to meet you here, Lord, and to worship in spirit and in truth. And Father, I pray that if there's anything in our hearts and lives today that would hinder the moving and the flowing of the power of God, that Lord, you'll forgive us of it and remember it no more. Father, I pray for those of our fellowship that are sick today, those that are shut in. Lord, those that have had procedures this week and those that are facing procedures, that, Lord, you might bring healing and blessings to each and to every one. Lord, those that have lost loved ones in recent days, that, Lord, you be there to be a peace and a comfort to them. Father, for the men and women who serve so faithfully in our military around the world today, Father, would you bless them, protect them, bring them home to their families. And, Lord, I pray for this nation today, that, Lord, we'll look to you for leadership and for guidance. And, Lord, our people will fall on our face before holy God confess our sins that you might bless this land once again and father wherever this message goes today out in uh, across the airwaves of the radio lord would you touch hearts and lives lord would you bless people with this with the things that happen here today and father i pray that your name will be edified and glorified in all that we do today bless brother wayne and the ladies now as they lead us in worship and accept our praises in jesus name we pray amen
Thank you, Lee. If you have your Bibles this morning, turn to 1 John, the first chapter. 1 John, the first chapter. Let's begin with verse number 1. The title of my message this morning is Life in Him. Life in Him. That which was from the beginning, which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes, which we looked upon, our hands have handled of the word of life. For the life was manifested, and we have seen it, and bared witness, and showed unto you that eternal life, which was with the Father, and was manifested unto us. That which we have seen and heard declared we unto you, that ye also may have fellowship with us, and truly our fellowship is with the Father, and with the Son, Jesus Christ. And these things write we unto you, that your joy may be full. This, then, is the message which we have heard of him, and declared unto you, that God is light, and in him there is no darkness at all. If we say that we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness, we lie, and do not the truth. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another. And the blood of Jesus his Son cleanses us from all sin. And if we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say that we have not sinned, we make him a liar and the word is not in us. May God add his blessing to the reading of his word. May we pray together. Our Heavenly Father, if it please you this morning, would you just uh, give us the words that we need to say? Lord, may the Holy Spirit work and move in our hearts and lives today. In Jesus' name, amen. John was old, an old man when he wrote 1 John, and likely he had outlived all the other apostles. These words are uh, of an inspired writer who was most intimate companion with our Lord in the early days of his ministry. Now, 1 John is a book for Christians in general, and life in him is the theme of the book. Eternal life is not an endless existence. It is a life that God reveals in Jesus Christ and shares by all who will put their faith and trust in Him. Believers possess a new life, and a source of that life is God. Let me tell you this morning, folks, unreservedly, unashamedly, the only way we'll ever get to heaven is through the blood-washed way of Jesus Christ. There's just no other way. Jesus Christ is that gateway. He is that door that opens for you and I to have eternal life. And we believers possess a new life, and a source of, of that life is God. And accessed by faith and grounded in goodness and love. Folks, it is our faith in Jesus Christ today that's going to make the difference. It will make the difference. In 1 John here, the first four verses, we want to look at the relationship to that life. Life in Jesus is through the Word of God. I challenged our group here on Wednesday night that if we're not reading the Word of God daily, to do so. And I'll challenge the group here this morning. Folks, it doesn't matter how much we read, but we do need to read the Word of God every day, feed our souls on the Word of God, because that is the lifeline of the Christian today. You'll never know the plan of God. You'll never know what God wants for us to do until you read the Word of God. We need to read it. We need to study it every day that we live and let it become a part of our life. Now, we see Jesus is called the Word. He is that living Word who possesses this life in, in eternal fellowship with God. The phrase from the beginning in, in verse number 1 shows the infinity uh, uh, of Jesus and, and goes back beyond the, the incarnation and the eternal purpose of God. Jesus always was. It's one of those questions that we're not going to be able to understand all of it till we get to heaven. But he always was. He was always there. Then we see that three of the human senses are used here. The tenses show the, the reality of Christ's humanity and the qualifications of John to write. He says, we have heard, we have seen. It portrays a continuous action. We have touched it portrays a repetition. John made contact with Jesus time and again. You and I who know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior have an obligation to tell the truth. 
to tell the truth of God's love. Why? Because we've experienced His saving grace. We've been in contact with Him. We, we pray and we read the Word of God. We've been touched by the Master. And, and folks, we need to again and again and again tell people what Jesus has done for you and for me. They know what happened to Peter, James, and John. But they need to, in our workplace, in our school places, in the cafeteria, in our restaurants, wherever we go, in our homes, people need to hear and know what Jesus Christ has done for us. And we need to tell it. It's a story that never grows old. And we need to tell him the Word of God. Tell him about it. Then life is properly manifested. John said that he had experienced life in Christ and now testifies of it to his readers. When's the last time you told someone how good God is to you? When's the last time you told someone how God saved you so? When's the last time someone heard it from your lips how good and gracious God really is? Folks, we need to do that. Our children need to hear it. Our grandchildren need to hear it. Our neighbors, our brothers and our sisters need to hear it. And they need to hear it from you and from me. How good and what God's done in our hearts and lives. John was, was manifesting it. He was properly telling people of what had happened. His testimony is, is, is valid because of his experience. Folks, when you've lived there and you've done something, people can't deny that. John goes farther to say, you, meaning all, can have eternal life too. Every person sitting here this morning is qualified to have eternal life in Jesus Christ if you'll put your faith and trust in Him. He died for the whole world this morning. Every person He died for. I was thinking, and I have no idea about His relationship, but the, the Israeli leader who just passed away yesterday, I was listening to the news people talk about how great he was and wonderful things that he did and how he was sort of a, a one-man machine in, in world peace and those type things. And all those are wonderful, folks. But the question I ask myself, did he know Jesus Christ? Is he in heaven today? We, you know, everybody gets good when they die. Amen? Come on now. I mean, we've we got a list this long about how good they are. They almost become saints. But let me tell you something, folks. The bottom line is this. Do they know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior? You can be good till the day you die. And we all need to be good. But unless you've accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you're still lost and doomed and damned for a devil's hell. Amen. Sorry, but that's what the Word of God tells us. And John tells us that, folks. He, he again tells us all of us can have eternal life. This divine life is fellowship with other believers and, and with God. And the basic idea of fellowship is having things in common. All of us here this morning who know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior have something in common. We're brothers and sisters in Christ and our Heavenly Father is Jesus. Amen. And we can rejoice in that today. And then we see also... The idea of this passage is sharing life in Christ through the Holy Spirit. Let the Spirit of God move and work in our hearts and lives. I'm going to tell you, if you wasn't here Wednesday night, you missed one of the greatest outpourings of the Spirit of God I've seen in a long time. It wasn't jumping up and down and running around, but there was just that sweet Spirit of God that filled that room back yonder. And folks, that's when God's people can get together in one accord and one purpose, to worship and to pray and to read the Word of God and sing the praises of God. And then there's real joy in this fellowship and in proclaiming it. True joy comes from fellowship with God and then the joy of overflowing when it is shared with other people. Now, folks, that's what it's all about. Well, we're supposed to be like the uh, fountain that sits in the city square that just runs over and over and over. And, and the joy of Jesus Christ just needs to be oozing out of us all the time when we walk with God. Amen? We should never come in here with long faces and down and woe is me. Let me tell you something, folks. God died for our, Jesus died for our sins. He's still alive today. He makes intercession for us. He loves us. He cares for us. And we need to have a smile on our face a song in our heart, and words of praise to our Heavenly Father. Amen and amen. 
I'm telling you something, folks. You can shout the blues away. You can get to praising God and thanking Him for the things that He's done for you. And I ain't begin to sing the praises of God. You may not be able to carry a tune in the bucket, but it's sweet to the voice, the ears of God. And when we do that, folks, the devil has to flee. And your uh, uh, bad times and down times will just ease right on out the door. The joy of fellowship with God. Knowing Jesus as our Lord and Savior. Then verses 5 through 10. This life is manifested in our conduct. Believers do two, three things. In 1 John, the fifth chapter, it says, we proclaim the message. The word declare here in the King James Version means to give a report. And and believers tell what Christ has done for them and, and can do for other people. When is the last time you gave a report of how good God was to you and what he can do for you? Now that's serious. I can't answer that for you. But I hope you can. I hope it's been been just recently that you shared with somebody what Jesus has done for you. I love telling people what God's done, folks. I love it. Knowing, knowing what God does and, and how He loves us. And then He tells us also, in six, verses 6 and 7, we're to walk in the light. Look at it for a moment. And if we say that we have fellowship with Him and walk in darkness, we lie and do not tell the truth. But if we walk in the light as He is in the light, we have fellowship one with another. And the blood of Jesus, His Son, cleanses us from all sin. The world will know when our sins have been forgiven. The world will know the brightness of our light and how we act and what we do. And then we need to tell the truth about sin. Uh, I thought about this this week. We may not, I mean, many people, I think he did a good job. But uh, O. Robinson, uh, uh, Phil Robinson of the D- Duck Dynasty, you may not like what he said, you may not like how he said it, but folks, he told the truth. He told the truth. People who do not know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior are going to die and go to hell. It's just that simple. That's what the Word of God says. And people who are in sin do not have fellowship with God. When we walk in sin, when we live in sin, we do not have fellowship with God. It's impossible to. Because the Word of God says we walk in darkness. And and God is light, folks. God is light. And we need to remember that. And the truth, we need to tell the truth about sin. Let me tell you, folks, there's no gray areas in serving God. You're either lost or saved. You're either going to heaven, you're going to hell. There's no in-between. And, and I know our world tries to say, oh, you do this and you do the other and you can be good and all that. But folks, the Word of God says that it's forever been settled in heaven that you either accept Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior and go to heaven or you live for the devil and go to hell. It's that simple. We need to tell the truth. Then we see a, a fuller discussion of these thoughts as seen in an emphasis on the negative and the positive in verse number 6. There's the allegation that one has fellowship with God while walking in darkness. Now, the idea of walking refers to conduct or character, for God is light and the symbol of splendor and and purity. And if that which illuminates our lives, since God is light, it is impossible to have fellowship with God and walk in darkness. There's something missing there. And I believe there's many Christians today, I'm not saying you lose your salvation, but I believe that you're out of fellowship with God. Why there's so many long and drawn faces and people are not happy in Jesus Christ, we're not walking in the light of God. And we need to walk in Jesus. Amen now. We're trying to live in the world and trying to serve God and you can't do both. I'll tell you, you can't. Then we see also, walking in the light is living righteous life. Righteous is doing the will of God. And this is only done when we're in fellowship with God and one another. You ever tried to hook two horses or two mules up to a wagon and one of them didn't want to do it? It doesn't work at all. Well, let two Christians try to work together when we hate each other. It don't work, folks. We laugh about it. But there's a many a church right here in the Augusta area that this morning the Spirit of God does not move in it because people can't get along with each other. 
And I'm telling you, they're not walking in fellowship. They're not walking in the light of God. And they need to put that sin under the blood of Jesus Christ and get their hearts right. That the God's Spirit might move and work in the life. Let me tell you folks, anytime we come to church with all in our heart against our brothers and our sisters, we're hindering the flowing and the moving of the power of God. Amen. Now, come on. This is where the rubber hits the wheel. It's just the way it is. And we need to have fellowship. If we're going to walk with God and talk with God, folks, we need to be that bright and shining light that tells the world of Jesus. And then there's that claim that, that one has no sin. And, and John opposed this in verse number 8. Look at it, what he says. He said, if you say that you have no sin, we deceive ourselves. And the truth is not in us. Oh, I would love to be all 162 or three of us here this morning to say that we have no sin in our life. And that would be wonderful. But that would be 163 lives. Because we are all sinners saved by grace. Amen? And if you're sitting here this morning, I've only had one person in my ministry to tell me that they didn't sin. And I looked at him and I said, you just did. You just did. Because, folks, we're deceiving ourselves and everybody else if we think that. But we need to, we need to understand, and, and the Scripture says that, that it makes God a liar. And, and many verses in the, in the Bible specifically point out that we've sinned, uh, Romans 3 and 23. Uh, the message of the Bible that, that humans are sinful and that God has provided salvation for them in Jesus Christ. True life, really living, is fellowship with God, which is possible through faith in Jesus Christ. And the deepest source of joy is found in Christian service and the highest form of service consists of bringing others into that fellowship with the Father through Jesus Christ. My appeal to you and I today, if you do not have life in Jesus, to accept Him as Lord and Savior, as your personal Savior right here this morning, and enter into eternal life with Him. And my appeal to you who are Christians, that you surrender your life to Him in Christian service. The joy of serving God. The joy of of winning people to Jesus Christ and making a difference. Oh, folks, we need, to, we need to serve God today. Life in Jesus. That's where life's at, in Jesus Christ. Every head bowed, every eye closed, every Christian praying. If you're here this morning and you know Jesus as Lord and Savior, pray for that person who might be struggling this morning. Pray for that person who might be having difficulty that they won't leave this building today unprepared to meet you. But that when we walk out that door today, that every one of us know Jesus as Lord and Savior. If there's some sin in your life that's never been confessed, you don't have to say a word to me. You come to this altar, kneel before holy God and confess it and get it out of the way. It's just between you and God. Whatever that need, would you just let God have his way? Let God speak to your heart this morning. Heavenly Father, would you use this invitation now, Lord, to your honor and your glory. And Lord, may not one person leave this place today unprepared to meet you. But that, Lord, when we leave today, we leave knowing that our name's in the Lamb's Book of Life for eternity. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. May we stand together. I hear the Savior say, Thy strength indeed is small. Child of weakness, watch and pray, find in thee mine all in all. Jesus paid it all, all to him I owe. Sin had left the crimson stain, he washed it white as snow.